right, we're jumping right in uh, into our video series on how to start a child care program. And I'm so excited. I'm Chloe Leary from the Winston Prouty Center. And I'm so excited to have Kim Freeman and Lee Marthy here to talk about what kind of education opportunities and what do we need to, what do people need to have in mind if they want to start a program in terms of their background and their education. And so, um, yeah, welcome. Thank you so much. And Kim, why don't you introduce yourself a little bit and tell us why you're a good person to have on this conversation. <laughs> Thanks, Chloe. So I am Kim Freeman, and currently I am an early childhood education instructor at the Wyndham Regional Career Center. So I get to spend two years with aspiring early childhood educators. Um, and I come to this work with um, 30 plus years experience working in every possible component of early childhood education, working my way up as a preschool teacher to a director, um, many, many years doing many, many things. So I'm excited to be here because I have um, opened multiple early childhood education programs. I have navigated the education system to get myself from point A to point B. And I'm just excited to be part of this project. Great, thank you so much. That's a lot of experience. We might have to do another session with you actually. <laughs> now that I think of it. And Lee, yeah, tell us why you're, you're great to have on this call too. So I'm Lee Marthy, and I'm one of the academic coordinators at the Community College of Vermont. And one of my primary roles within the institution is to help people navigate our degree program and our certificate program with college courses. Um, Community College of Vermont is uh, the holder of a lot of higher educational opportunities and trainings. And so I, I do part of that. I don't do all of that. Northern Lights lives within the Community College of Vermont as well. And so I have lots of great colleagues who do that work. Um, and I'm also an alum of the Community College of Vermont's Early Childhood Education Program. I'm a curious person who loves education. And so it was a great opportunity for me to learn more about the program and to become a better advisor by taking those courses. So that's so great. So you yeah. have hands-on experience with what I do with, you know, with, with the educational program. piece of it. Yeah. <laughs> so great. Good. Well, let's, um, yeah, let's jump in and, um, I'm going to start actually with what, and just to say, we've been focusing a little bit on, um, particularly people who might want to start a business in their homes, because mm -hmm. uh, in this current crisis of not enough child care, it's a, sometimes an, an easier lift to, um, rather than like just try to stand up a big center or something like that, it just seems like incrementally it's easier. So, um, so yeah, what are uh, some of the educational requirements or credentials that people might need um, if they're thinking of starting a program? And either one of you can start. I could jump in here. Um, so I love that you're starting with the fact of um, if people want to open uh, uh, early childhood education program in their home, because um, for starters, anyone opening a program has a year to complete the requirements that they would need. And the requirements, the credential for an early childhood educator working out of their home um, would be as simple as taking the foundations uh, trainings through Northern Lights at CCV. And um, what's really fun about that is, you know, maybe you're someone who's been away from school for a while or school wasn't really your thing. Um, the, the fundamentals uh, packet is really comprehensive in that it looks at all um, of the different components of operating an early childhood education program and you develop a really great cohort of um, people who support you and um, kind of help carry you along, particularly in that first year when you're navigating things you never really thought might come along, right? So um, to open an early childhood education program in your home, you just need that fundamentals and um, you have a year to complete it. Great, and fundamentals, so that's run out of Northern Lights at CCB, and Lee, you mentioned that. Um, do you, how, um, how often does it run? Is it a pretty easy thing to do? Is it online? Yeah, what are some of the parameters around fundamentals? 
Yeah, fundamentals runs on a pretty regular basis. Um, summer, I think they've taken a little break um, from the program, but um, my understanding from um, some of my colleagues is that they run it on a, a fairly regular basis so that it's accessible. And it's it's um, it's been something that we've run on site at the campus, but I, they've gotten really great about making these things remote. One of the gifts of COVID is that we've learned how to do this remotely. And for folks who are, um, you know, based out of their own homes, it's it's kind of nice to to put the kids to bed and <laughs> have dinner made and, and to go onto your computer to do the work that you need to do. So um, I know that we're going back to more face-to-face -face opportunities. Um, so for folks who want to network and make those connections, we're going to start seeing more and more of that happening again as we've gotten a handle on this, this uh, pandemic a little bit more, but yeah. Great. And so, right, if people have a year to do it and it runs pretty often, that's, that doesn't seem, that seems like uh, so low, low barrier to entry in a way. So that's not, and that remind me um, how that's, was it 40 hours of class time? 45. 45. Okay, great. Good. And it, but it, so it's not for credit, right? Um, college credit. It's just, it's a certificate. Right. The equivalent, if someone knew that they were interested in actually building um, their, their college cre uh, credential, mm -hmm. then the equivalent would be um, a child development course. Huh. So you could either do fundamentals or take a three credit child development course. And that yes. was the requirement. Okay, great. So if you already have a child development course, could that count? So somebody who already has that background. So these are for folks who like have never necessarily had, or if they just wanted to do some refreshing, but it's okay. Yes. Great. And how expensive is it? Do we happen to know <laughs> how much is fundamentals? Fundamentals, I think think is um, $75. I oh, think wow. it's right. It's not expensive. I, I think that's the right amount. So it's, it's, uh, it's not prohibitive for most people. Yeah. And I think there are scholarships available as uh -huh. well. Yeah, that's, that is really great. Um, were you going to say something? No. I was, well, I was just going to add that, um, you know, there, there are two types of people, right? There are pe the people who want to go and, and do the college coursework. And then again, for those who might feel a little nervous about that and want to dab their toe in, again, fundamentals helps with that because it's, it's building knowledge and there's a component where you're um, showing your competency. You would have um, observation done on you where you could really be able to talk like, yeah, I was working with those two children and I really didn't know what to say when he grabbed that toy from her and, and getting that support as you build um, your knowledge and abilities working with young children. Mm -hmm. I think one of the um, maybe downsides of a home-based program for some folks, we talk about this a little bit in another session, is it can be isolating, right? You're not, if you're at home doing your program, um, you know, and I know there's really good support networks, but um, it can feel, yeah, like you wonder what to do. So that's good to, you know, think about the different um, ways you might get support or feedback or, or reflection time. Right. You know, it's interesting. I realize we're talking about formal education in some ways and, and uh, how important it is, all the different ways we learn. And, and then, um, yeah, how, how do we build that into the system and mentorship, too? Like, I think there are lots of ways um, to do that. So um, one of the things I didn't talk about as far as educational pathways that I watch for a lot of folks is that people who have been in the field for many, many years and have done lots and lots of training can actually use our assessment of prior learning processes at CCB and earn lots of credits. And these are people with 20 years of experience. They've done lots of wonderful training and they could spend eight weeks working on a focused portfolio and get 15 credits worth of college um, within that process. And so um, you've already done the work, you've already had the experience, and that's another way that we watch people get credit for what they already know about early childhood education. So that's a, a valid program that I see people use all the time. And that's a, you just contact CCB and sort of ask mm -hmm. For that 
Um, is it is it its own course? Do you have an advisor? How there's a, there's a course, and and the faculty member guides you through the process of of earning those credits and gathering your materials together. So yeah. You know, as we um, that watch the development of this career, we've talked. You know, I think. Uh, um, We've lost a lot of home-based providers in Vermont in the past several years for many different reasons. And I think one of them that people pointed out is, um, you know, the, the credentialing or the expectations have changed a little bit, even though we just talked about that, it's a low barrier to entry around take a class and you could get in. It's just, um, you know, I think it can feel intimidating. And so hearing that your experience matters and you can turn it into college credit, I think is really, I, I know it's a lot of work. It sounds like, it, you know, it's not like it's necessarily like, you know, wave a magic wand and it happens, but that's powerful that you could turn, you know, your experience and your knowledge into college credits and um, that that's another pathway. So what's it called? Assessment of prior learning? Yeah, our program is an assessment of prior learning, and there are a few different ways that you can attain that, a course challenge or the focus portfolio, or there's a bigger process called the assessment of prior learning that's a whole semester long and um, allows you to look more at the, the program, but it's, it's well formed, it's well respected around the country. I remember being in the Midwest and looking at this program and thinking, oh, I wish we had something like this. And I admired it from afar 30 years ago. So yeah, it's a great, well-established program. That's so great. Um, good. In, in terms of, um, so for folks who might want to um, do college or sort of pursue that, um, that path, it can feel expensive. Or even, you know, you said there are scholarships. What are some of the ways you've seen people, um, you know, get the financial resources they need to do professional development or college credits or, or that sort of thing? What are some options that people might explore? I've definitely seen people explore the apprenticeship option. I've been a mentor several times for folks who um, were working in a licensed uh, early childhood education program and um, were simultaneously taking courses at CCV. And the apprenticeship program is great because it pays for the course. And um, there's additional supports in the apprenticeship program, right? There's a, there's a mentor that you meet with who observes you, who you get to troubleshoot with. It's really a wonderful um, in-depth experience and um, provides that free education. <laughs> So actually, I'm, I'm glad uh, now that you mentioned it, we had a teacher here at Winston Prouty who has gone through that and used it to her advantage and finished her associate's degree, essentially. So it was really a good, a good thing. I think people also, um, you know, Lee, you were talking earlier about how do we, how do I fit this into my life, you know, and how to, what opportunities exist. And so um, you know, you are both working with lots of different kinds of students. What are some of the challenges people have faced in accessing, um, at, uh, you know, education or getting credentials or professional development? Mm -hmm. And then how have you seen them work around them? Well, for good or, or not so good, um, most people who work in early childhood education don't make a lot of money. And so there are lots of federal funds and state funds that are available so most people who have this as their career and are working, um, unless they have a, a partner or some other income source, um, are eligible for free grants and scholarships through the federal and state government. Um, when that doesn't happen, um, there are loans that people can take out. We do our best not to encourage people to take on loans if they don't have to. I, I always look at it in terms of, if you were part of my family, I would not want you to leave with a degree that you had to pay for after, mm -hmm. after you graduate, because it's difficult to do that. Um, but I also watch people, um, there's a wonderful program or a wonderful scholarship for people who are established in the program through the Rotary. Mm -hmm. uh, the Jesse Corum um, scholarship gives people $2,500. I've watched that launch people toward their end of their degree um, when they've when they've needed it the most. Mm -hmm. um, right now during the pandemic again there have been tons of funds that have come through our state government that have supported people too and so 
whether it's the, the um, critical careers scholarships that are out there um, or there are other scholarships available, I encourage people to fill out the FAFSA, fill out the VSAC grant applications, and then talk to one of our financial aid counselors because there are, there are lots of different ways to fund this. So. And, and then we have Kim's program at the Career Center that has high school level students taking courses for free as well. So we've got some really wonderful opportunities for young professionals who would like to get into the field before they even graduate from high school. I have a senior who just graduated and she um, messaged me and she is working as an assistant preschool teacher. Boom, she's, she's ready to roll between, you know, she did the pre-apprenticeship program and she has four college classes under her belt mm -hmm. and a lot of experience, it's pretty exciting. Chloe, I wanna get back to your question about barriers mm -hmm. um, because, you know, not only am I, do I teach uh, my high school students, but I do also teach for CCV. So I, you know, I have adult learners and time and again, one of the biggest barriers I think that I am seeing is um, confidence. Mm -hmm. um, because people may start, they may think, oh yeah, I'll take a college course, mm -hmm. but without all the layers of support that one would need, right? Like maybe support in their families or support in their workplaces or um, just wraparound supports, they may start feeling like I can't do this. Mm -hmm. um, and so I do see people kind of drop drop out, like I, I can't do this. Mm -hmm. So um, I just want to encourage if anyone is out there thinking like, I can't do this, you can do this. People do do this, but find the supports that you need um, before you start, because you'll need some extra support. I see the same thing, Kim, you know, when I have students who, and many people think I can only take one class at a time. That's not, I'll never get there. I'll never be able to do what I need to do. But I regularly watch students take one class at a time because it is what they need, they can manage. And that's the wisest move they can make. Mm -hmm. A degree. It's not a it's not a sprint. It's a it's a marathon for a lot of people. And I think that that is okay. I mean, people in this field are doing sacred work with kids and community. And it takes a lot of energy. But it is a way for you to, I think, for people to network, to learn new skills, to learn new things that they had never considered before, but they only need to do it one at a time. They could go more full-time and that is a, an option too. But, you know, for most people, finding that balance is really important and finding the resources that they need is really that balance. Yeah. Is it fair to say, just listening to, um, both of you, you know, I've been thinking about, again, we talked about why a home-based program might be, especially in this time of sort of shortage and scarcity, a, a good path, um, it easier. It, it strikes me listening to you talk that it is also a good starting point, a good uh, point of entry. So if, if you have a high school diploma and you take the 45 hour, you have a year to take either a three credit class or the 45 hours of fundamentals, then you can just start a program now. You know what I mean? Like that's, it, and um, and sometimes with confidence, like what's the it, it can build on itself. So you know, if, if folks have been thinking of of getting into the field, this is a good place to start in the field. And you know, there are other things about the physical environment. So you know, talking to licensing and sort of figuring out helping people find resources to figure out that their home is possible. But just stuff from the education side, it strikes me, like just do it, jump in. You can, you know, there are. Um, yeah, it's there's uh, slow and steady wins the race, and and it's not a big leap to start. And who knows where it will go? So, and you can, and just like Lee mentioned, um, taking you know one course at a time. If you open a home program, you can start small. I started with just a couple kids. I had my own baby. I took a couple kids. By you know, thirteen years later, I had a house full and after school kids that came to boot. But you do what works best for you and your family and you slowly build. Yeah. 
Right. And it offers, I think that's the other thing too, is it offers that flexibility in this time, you know, people have been thinking about what, what do I want to do with my life or figuring out their own childcare. Um, it can actually be a, a really, it is very hard and sacred work and very hard. Like I, I get a little tired even thinking about it these days, but like I couldn't have a house full of kids, but, um, but that it's, um, yeah, you can make it work with your life sometimes too. So great. Um, yeah, what haven't we covered about credentials and education? Is there anything that um, that you all see again from your students or um, that people might want to know? I'm thinking a little bit about the early college program. Again, I that's a new thing that I think for folks who are in the high school age and you know thinking about early childhood as a career path, early college will allow you now to do a whole degree for free if you start your senior year. I mean, you could start before with Kim's program in the in the career center, but someone could essentially get their associate's degree for free um, and start their own program by the time they're 19 or 20 years old. And to have a, a thriving business that would allow them to do that, either to go into a, a, a career a center, but you could also do this at home. Yeah. yeah. So that's an amazing, that McClure scholarship is a great opportunity for, for young professionals who really love kids and want to be part of their lives and part of families' lives. They can do it and they, they can have a whole degree. What is the easiest way, do you think, for folks to um, access some of this information? You know, like who, you know, maybe somebody's heard this and now like is ready to pick up the phone and call someone. What, what would be the? Um, so, you know, I, I Googled Northern Lights at CCV to see what resources there were. And there really are great accessible resources. You wanna start a program, this is what you need to do. Here's the people, uh, here's who you can talk to. Um, here's the training calendar. Mm -hmm. You know, it was really right there front and center, easy peasy. Mm -hmm. So Northern Lights at CCD, this is the website. You'll find everything you need. Great, <laughs> that's so easy. I think, um, and one of the reasons we wanted to do this series too is it's easier sometimes when you have a face with a name, you know, like I, I think, um, you know, knowing, oh, I did see, that. I could call that person, you know, like sometimes it, searching the web is one thing and it's just having some, a friendly face or a name that you know can really help. And my hope is that we can introduce ourselves to folks in the region so that they, it's not so scary. Like, sure, I can pick up the phone and call somebody. Um, so and thinking, you know, we've talked about it a couple of times on this, it's really on my mind too, the idea of groups of people or cohorts and having a mentor and sort of supporting each other in the field and how important that is. So I don't have an answer to that, but it's definitely on my mind as I do these interviews, it keeps coming up. How do we, how do we, we, also, we also have some great professional organizations in Vermont who are advocating for children and, and early childhood education. And that I think is another network of people that if you wanna if you wanna check it out as a profession, there are organizations like that out there. So, um, you know, it's not just education that's the pathway. There are professionals in this state who have been doing this for years and years and would love to bring a new professional into the field. Yeah, I think in building that capacity locally too. So that, you know, the Wyndham Early Childhood Educators Co-op group is a good um, a good place to connect with other people, professionals in the field who wanna who wanna sort of help build, build out the deep in the bench, so to speak. So bring in the next generation. Because as we need no, it's very important. Uh, it's an incredibly important part of our communities to be thriving to have adequate early childhood education. So We'll keep at it. Great. Anything else before we sign off? I'd like to put out there that I would be very happy to talk with anyone who was curious, whether it was about education or, gee, what was it like operating out of your home for 13 years? Or, you know, any of those, any of those kinds of questions. I would love to, 
I would love to chat with people. Oh, Kim, thank you. And so uh, uh, we'll put your email up. I think we can add text to this. So um, uh, kfreeman at wsesdvt.org. You got it. So, oh, <laughs> that's really generous. Thank you. And same, right. I'm kind of, anybody, feel free to give me a call. I might not know the answer, but I could probably find somebody to help you. <laughs> so. Thank you all Thank so you. much for taking time to do this. I really super appreciate it. And uh, and hopefully we will encourage some people by having talked today to, to jump in and join the field. Be great. Yeah.